Okay, I want to talk about Unicode range. This is a CSS property that lets you choose individual characters that you want to be included inside your fonts. So as an example, I have here two paragraphs on my web page, and I'm applying different fonts to different parts of this. Well, the way I'm doing that is with Unicode range. So I have similar text, two words and an ampersand in the middle for all of them, and what I'm doing is I'm defining up here three different at font faces. So I'm, I'm importing a font using at font face. Now Palantino and Railway Lite are both fonts that I have installed on my computer, but I could do this with a web font as well. I could bring in some web font. I just decided to use something that I already have locally installed. Font family inside of at font face is where you give a name to the font that you're importing. So if you've already watched my uh, web fonts videos, then you understand how this works. These names I'm going to reference in the CSS for these two paragraphs. Now the thing that makes this different is this Unicode range property. With Unicode range, I'm specifying one character or a range of characters or a list of characters that I want to include with this font. So it will only bring in this one single character from this font as this name. So when I use this name, as I have down here in my second paragraph, the very first thing on the list is AMP. Now I've given it uppercase, but it doesn't really matter if it's uppercase, lowercase. You can see here I used a mixture of uppercase, lowercase. Here I called it all with uppercase. So it will still work regardless of the case. I did this just to make it stand out. This font that I'm bringing in is defined up here. So it is the Palantino font face and only the ampersand. That's the only character that I want to bring in. So I have that here, amp, and that is right here, this one ampersand. If you look at the two ampersands, the top one, the first paragraph, I included up, Helvetica, Arial, Sans Serif. So that's what this one is right here. This is the Helvetica ampersand. Helvetica font face being used on the ampersand. Here, I'm using the Palantino font to style this. So I get a different look and feel. So I could do the whole thing with one font if all I did was just that. I'm now using Helvetica Arial Sans Serif for everything except for this ampersand because this font got used first. It was applied, it worked, but it didn't cover everything that was being used here because it wasn't covering the entirety of what was inside this second paragraph, the other fallback fonts got used. Now, that other one, low, you can see now that I've changed the lowercase characters. And I did that with this one. So Railway Light is the one that I'm importing. Low is the name that I'm giving to this collection. And then the range is set to the Unicode value 61 through 7a. That is the range of numbers in Unicode that reference the English lowercase letters. So those are the ones that I'm including, and that's why I'm getting the ampersand is using Palantino. This is applying to all the lowercase, and then Helvetica. I'm still using Helvetica for those two, the two capital C's. And just the reverse up here. I'm using the uppercase font, which is Railway Light, with the uppercase range, as opposed to the lowercase range, this is capital A to capital Z. Those letters are all being imported using Railway Light. So the A and the O in this first paragraph are being converted. So we can put, um, with Unicode range, we can put in a single character. We can put in a range of character. You can even put in wildcards. You could say, uh, let's say zero, zero, question mark, question mark. So anything that falls in that range is getting Palantino, which basically covers everything in the second paragraph here. So that's a wild card. You can do it with or without the zeros. So 26 is the character or zero, zero, 26. It's the same number. So individual point, wild cards, range is what we're doing here. Or you can actually list off a couple of other characters. So if I wanted to also do zero, zero, uh, let's say 3, 8. 
I can't think of what that is right now, but this would give me a list of possible characters. So both of these characters would be imported with this font or extracted from Palantino and stored as this font family. And that's Unicode range. So hope you find that useful. Um, try it out. It's a great way to do things like styling individual characters. If you're making headings and you want to really make the first letter or some sort of punctuation part stand out, get the Unicode characters, list them, and use a different font that you really like for those individual letters. All right. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.